On-the-scene coverage of ACC14 is supported by Janssen Pharmaceuticals, Incorporated. I'm Peter Block here at ACC in Washington, D.C. at the annual meeting for On the Scene. I'm covering late-breaking clinical trials, and one of the trials today is the trial of bariatric surgery versus intensive medical therapy. And with me is Phil Schauer from the Cleveland Clinic. Phil, tell me about your trial short version. This is now a three-year follow-up. That's right, Peter. This is a three-arm randomized trial comparing gastric bypass, sleeve gastrectomy with an intense uh, regimen for treating type 2 diabetes. So the whole point here is to try to figure out whether surgery actually trumps intense medical therapy. What's the goal in yeah. medical therapy and yeah. in surgery? Yeah, the primary endpoint was, of course, hemoglobin A1C. And these folks uh, started out in A1C of about 9%, and most of them had pretty advanced diabetes. They had diabetes for eight years or more. And so with surgery, we were able to drive their A1C down close to 6% on average, while in the medical group at three years, the average was just a little bit above 8%. Okay, so that, I'm sure, produces a statistical significance at this point. When did you first see those two lines diverge? Well, we reported the data at the one-year mark, and that's where we saw the maximal effect of, of both treatments. But what we found was that the effect of surgery was quite durable and sustained after three years, while there was some degradation in benefit on the medical treatment side. Okay, so I've got to ask one other question, having nothing to do with diabetes, but the weight loss issue. How much weight loss is there in the two trials, in the two sides of the trial? Yeah, well, Peter, weight loss was obviously one of the drivers of the benefit. So in the surgical group, they lost on average about 25% of their body weight, whereas in the medical group, they lost about 4% of their body weight at the three-year mark. So clearly a difference there as well. Huge difference. Interesting yeah. outcome. So now you're three years out, what's going to happen here? Do you think this is something that's going to continue as you look forward as a surgeon? Well, we're going to follow these folks out to five years. and and we'll begin to look at you know, some real hard cardiovascular endpoints. Now our study of 150 patients may not be powered enough to really show differences in heart attack and stroke, but we're gonna nevertheless look for them at the five year mark. Well, we know that the outcomes of uncontrolled diabetes are not good, and hopefully what you'll see with this is a decrease in those outcomes, right? Yeah, I mean, that's all, all, the ultimate goal of treating diabetes is trying to reduce those uh, very undesirable long-term cardiovascular um, complications. Okay, so Phil, give me the take-home message for all those cardiologists out there with diabetic patients who are obese. Yeah, the take-home message is that for patients with type 2 diabetes, try the drugs first. Try aggressive drug treatment, but if that doesn't get them into decent control, then they should have surgery. Uh, because surgery is the most effective treatment for type 2 diabetes, period. There you go. Thank you very much, Phil. Thank you, Peter.